Um, my name is uh, George Santias, VP of Administration for the National, National Black Metro New York Black MBA chapter. Um, we have uh, an exciting discussion to you, uh, an exciting discussion for you um, as it relates to uh, mental health. Um, this is part of a, a community conversation series that we launched um, during the coronavirus, where we sort of focused on various different aspects of uh, you know, our members' of daily lives, whether that is uh, you're a member looking to start a small business, looking for some advice. Um, we had a discussion with uh, a business advisor um, on IG Live, whether that is uh, a entrepreneur looking for different opportunities in the hemp and CBD industry. We had a dis discussion with Tony Rogers, um, who is a expert on the, the CBD industry. Um, and then also estate planning. We had a discussion on estate planning with uh, Lily Incontour, um, who is a, uh, one of our attorneys in our, mem in, our, in our membership group that gave us a good perspective on uh, why we need estate planning. Now, uh, it's this been in, in the making for a while, um, this discussion, which would be focused on mental health. Uh, mental health is something that uh, we at the National Black, Black MBA chapter, uh, New York chapter, sorry. <laughs> Metro New York National Black MBA chapter. Uh, we feel strongly about mental health, so much so that uh, we participated in many health initiatives throughout the city, especially the ones that were um, initiated by the uh, First Lady of uh, New York City. And so uh, without further ado, I'll jump right into uh, the introductions. Uh, then we'll have a presentation, and then we'll, we want you to move around a little bit. Um, we'll have a nice yoga session uh, by Courtney. Uh, first and foremost, we have two amazing uh, mental health uh, experts here, um, one by the name of Dina Phillip. Say hi, Dina. Hey, Dina Felipe. Yep, Dina, Dina Felipe. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we have uh, Courtney Allen. Courtney Allen, say hi, Courtney. Hi guys, it's Courtney Allen. I like to see you all. Excellent. excellent. Okay, so um, let's start with Miss Dina Felipe. Uh, she is an MBA, has a diverse career uh, background that expands over fifty years since two thousand sixteen. Uh, Dina have. Dina have further expressed her passion for addressing and promoting physical and mental health in communities. As the founder of My Caring Wish LLC, she provides comprehensive services that support and foster the health and wellness for people of all ages. Dina believes in, in self-care, healthy eating, and overall optimal health. Um, Dina's resume is quite intense. All right, she has uh, she has worked in the health industry as an IT software and finance analyst, where she monitors systems that track COVID-19 reports and, and analysis uh, funding for programs. Uh, through her career in the health industry, uh, she has been fortunate to address racial and ethical uh, and social economic health inequities and strategies to eliminate systematic disparities. Prior to the healthcare, a career, Dina worked in uh, aviation, finance, and housing administration. Vina, uh, uh, Mr. Felipe, Ms. Philippe uh, started her career as a SAP consultant for IBM. Okay, Dina holds an MBA, of course, from the University of Pittsburgh, as, as she, as, and she also holds a BA in business management and BS in economics from Stony Brook University. She is a proud native Brooklyn Knight. Say, say hi to Brooklyn, say hi, whoa, 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 Brooklyn. All right, uh, so without further ado, um, we're gonna jump right into Dina's uh, uh, presentation and then we'll move on to uh, Courtney's piece. So Dina, you are okay to skip, share your screen now. All right, okay, hey everyone, I'm gonna share my screen. Oops. Okay. So we're going to start off, I'm, I'm Dina Felipe, and we're going to discuss the six pillars to a health portfolio, in addition to ways that we can mitigate risks of stress, and also how racism plays a pivotal point in our mental health. 
So I want to have this disclaimer. I am not a certified therapist or a mental health uh, specialist, and God bless those people. However, I have over 10 years. I've, I'm a trusted outlet for a number of people. I work in the health and mental hygiene space, and I'm a fitness instructor with a concentration in dance. Most importantly, I'm conscious of the way I care for myself and how I advise others from what to eat to how to work out. Plus the usage of meditation and therapy is a lifestyle for me. I believe in being well-rounded with self-care and doing the tough work physically and mentally. And I'm open to share my resource. So I look forward to this discussion with you all. And as stated, uh, currently my employer is in the health and mental hygiene space in which I, we promote and protect the physical health, environmental health, and mental hygiene of over 8 million people, the great New Yorkers. And I'm the founder of My Care and Wish, which is an organization that provides services to support and foster the health and wellness of our clients. And yes, we do believe in self-care, healthy living, and overall life improvement. And so I do offer classes and services to improve people's optimum health. So whether you're experiencing additional weight gain or feeling overwhelmed and stressed, like right now, we are just reinventing ourselves and taking on life with a new spirit. And so we want to help people, you know, reduce isolation, anxiety, and help our clients excel, right? So My Care and Wish is innovative. We're fun. We like to just have a good time and be vibrant while we're learning for our mental space and our physical. So you can contact me at www.mycarenwish or dfelipe at mycarenwish.com or Instagram at my underscore caring underscore wish and be a part of this community. And so here, this slide here is very busy, right? So don't be overwhelmed by the slide. You can actually take a, a photo of it because I want you to be able to read the different points that are on here. But it's three different sectors that are natural reactions to stressful uh, situations. So we have the spiritual side of it, uh, the physical side, in addition to the behavior, which is more on the mental side, right? So let's look at the first pillar, the first and middle screen with the spiritual. So the natural reaction to a stressful situation in the spiritual sense is that people may feel a bit overwhelmed and a uh, loss of purpose. Like, why am I here? What's my purpose? Feeling of feeling uh, empty, right? So you may question your values or some of your belief. You may feel a little bit withdrawn from your spirituality or you may be super intense and suddenly turning towards your uh, spirituality, right? So these are just like your natural reactions to a stressful moment within the spiritual space. So let's look down uh, the left for your physical, right? So sometimes our body just have a natural reaction, physical like reaction to stress. And that can be like a headache or you're feeling extremely dizzy, low energy, you're sweating, you can have chills. Some people just have trouble breathing or even like trouble sleeping. So these are like physical uh, components to when someone is feeling like the stress, how it appears and stuff. Some people even start to like lose their hair, like just different things. Uh, the behavioral more mental reaction to a stressful situation is that you may find that you're not acting like yourself lately, right? Um, you feel withdrawn from people, right? Like social, this part of social distance where it's like, it's, on, it's by design because mentally you're just not feeling well. Uh, you're feeling restless, uh, hyperactive, and then some your change in your mood. So you may start um, drinking a little bit more, uh, having more alcohol. So different like substance abuse may be in, 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 in heightened when you're feeling a bit stressed and having like the natural reaction to that. But what I want to give you was some action steps, right? To know that stress is something that we're gonna be dealing with for the rest of our lives. But it's more so the reaction to it, right? So it's like, how do you manage it? How do you cope with it? How you would be able to identify like, this is a stressful moment for me, but what can I do? So here are some six tips that you can use to help yourself cope with stress. Sometimes you just have to take time to relax, right? I know it's easy said than done, but relax just really just means taking a pause, taking a step back and analyzing what is it that you're feeling and maybe even like why, right? So relaxation is an important tool to help your body and your mind like recuperate, right? Then also like go to bed, right? Sleep, <laughs> chronic sleep uh, deprivation is an impact has an impact on your mood. I know for me, that's something that I have to manage. Sometimes I go to bed like too late. I think last night I went to bed almost like two o'clock. Everybody was watching that debate. Come on, you know, it was tough to go to sleep after that, right? So it's like, I watched that and I just had to like get some work done and it was just a lot going on in my head. So, but you know, I know sometimes I just need to go to bed, right? And then in addition to that, 
dancing. For me, dancing to music is my life. Music is the number one language. So sometimes you just need to put on some music and just dance, just, just release the stress. Um, then connecting with others, right? Share how you're feeling with your family, your friends, and build like a strong support system. It's nothing like having someone or a few people that you can like bounce ideas with and let people know how you're feeling and just get some insight. And then stay informed, right? But pay attention to having reliable sources. Sometimes everything you read on Facebook may not be reliable. So, you know, do fact check with yourself as you stay informed on what's going on, especially in this day. I want to jump in in here, Dina. You mentioned sometimes what we see in Facebook is not reliable. Uh, Have you ever seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix? I have not, but I know there's some people on here, such as like Jackie, who has, but I'm planning on watching it soon. Amazing. But tell me more about that. What do you, what did you want to say? No, no, I, I, it, it sort of highlights how uh, social media kind of um, affects our mental health in a big way. Um, right. Like a big, how impactful social media can be on, on, on our, our mental health. But uh, right. there's no like, you know, having you know, doing analytics and marketing and how it's targeted to certain groups, even based on like what we click on, the analytics behind that, they get to identify who we are. We are, I didn't watch the, the Netflix, uh, but I plan on, and I'm, I'm assuming that it has something to do with what I'm about to state, but like just the analytics around who you are and how it cultivate your mindset and how you can view things. But yeah, I just, it's so true. So that's why you want to be more in control of your, your mental state space and uh, even controlling like your social media and we are kind of like the last generation that really understand the difference between social media and what's really going out going on in society right a lot of uh, the younger generation they grew up in social media so that's their form of way of connecting with one another for us you know we know how to like have a conversation on the phone and not to say that the next generation do not but we do know that playing outside is not as common with some the younger group than it is like for our generation and older when, you know, people are able to do so many things online and virtual. And then now with COVID-19 going on and everyone is pretty much at home, going back into um, the electronics is something that's gonna be a lot more common, even like now how we're sharing a space where we probably would have been at a spot in the city somewhere. But hey, we're here, so we're thankful for that. But if you're also feeling that you do need to uh, seek help, if that, you're having distress, I would say, quite often, you know, for a few days, for a few weeks, or if you experience kind of like depressed for a few months, then definitely talk to a professional. And it's no we, uh, we, shame in that. Yes? I wanted to quickly jump in. Um, I think maybe you, your mic is too close to your uh, shirt. It's, uh, we hear some background noise. You hear background, like an echo? No, no, just a, just a muffled, that's all. Okay, I hope this is better. Yeah, it's better now. So. All right. Okay, so yeah, I was stating, you know, seek professional help and there's no shame in us seeking, you know, speaking to a therapist, speaking to a counselor regarding your needs. Thanks for that. All right, so next we're gonna talk about something quite fun and interesting is the six pillars of our health portfolio. Right, and I identify these six pillars as physical, mental, dietary, spiritual, social, and financial. Now, a personal application, these six pillars allow an individual to analyze his or her life from different angles. This breakdown helps one identify what consumes him or her and how life decisions can alter our outcome. So I want you to know this pandemic has been stressful for us all, so be kind to yourself. Coping with stress in a healthy way will make you, the people you care about, in your community stronger. So within these six pillars, you have the right, you have the right at any moment to improve all aspects of your health, right? So if you're like, today, today is the day, I'm going to stop doing X. You have the right to do that. You have the right to be selfish, to take care of your mental, your mental space and your health. So eating healthy, focusing on your inner self, and active living can help you lose weight, manage stress, save money, have more energy, and set a good example for others. 
So let's talk about the physical health in terms of the health portfolio, right? So like, let's just keep moving, right? Right now we're spending a lot more time at home. It's important to keep moving. Having regular exercises helps benefit your body and your mind. So if you can try to exercise three to four times out of the week, you know, picking activities that you truly enjoy and incorporate into your normal everyday uh, routine, let's try to work out at least like 10 to 15 minutes of physical movement, you know, such as walking, stretching, easing muscle strain, and relief relief, uh, mental tension and improve blood circulation. For myself, I like to walk and love bike riding. So just know that especially now, um, when you're exercising, it helps reduce stress. It can prevent weight gain, which is the help, which is a good help, uh, boost the immune system, confidence, and improve your sleep. Because I know after I work out, I'm tired. So let's talk about the mental. And so I want us to all create space for your mental health. You need to create the energy, the space to take care of what's going on up, you know, up here. So everyone has mental health, regardless of whether or not you are experiencing a mental health condition or illness, right? Your feelings are real, they're valid, and you, you deserve to be heard and supported. So I want you to process your feelings, right? For everyone feeling uh, anxious, isolated, or depressed, know that you're not alone. Processing your feelings look different for everyone. What is important is that you do what feels right for you. And then knowing that, especially in our community, you know, Black men uh, taking the time to really express like their mental state is, I think, a little bit more challenging because they were raised not to express that feeling. So they will deviate to express an anger where a lot of times it's like hurt and pain and uh, they need to tap into that and it's okay to express those emotions. So let's talk about dietary. Right. And so this is the fun part. Right. So when I thought of this, I was thinking back to like college. And since this is by the National Black MBA, we all pretty much have attended some form of, uh, of college. And I know you all remember like the freshman 15. Right. And so freshman 15 is the 15 pounds that you are expected to pretty much gain because you are out in the world and you running and you just trying to figure out your life, what you eating too, right? So that whole freshman 15, but just remember you had your sophomore year, your junior year, your senior year to drop those pounds, right? And you was running the class. Now with COVID-19, you know, those 19 pounds or more that you may have added on, we're a little bit older now. So trying to like knock those pounds down may be a little bit different. You're not running the class and everything. So we just got to be mindful of those 19 plus pounds that people have tried to put on. Be careful, right? Because getting it down may not be uh, as easy as when you was in your, your 18 years, right? So the quality of the food that you eat can impact your overall physical and mental health, right? So eating healthy food could go a long way towards achieving a healthy lifestyle. So I want each of us to do this little action plan is that we can try to change like one thing this week towards a healthier diet, right? Some people started doing maybe like meatless Mondays, right? Where, you know, every Monday you're like, okay, I'm gonna take away this meat. I'm not gonna have any chicken or beef. I'm just gonna have vegetables and some fruit and continue with my meal or some tips for you know when you're cooking at home is try to have healthier methods for cooking where you're steaming grilling or baking your meal versus using the oil and frying them and then using different herbs and spices right so for instance if you want to flavor your food you can use more turmeric garlic pepper and stay away from the sodium as much as possible so now through uh, November 18th, I know the farmer's market is offering a free and weekly Facebook live workshop. So every Tuesday from 12 to 1230, they have it. And you can go to this uh, site, facebook.com, Eating Healthy NYC, to just see like a list of diff uh, different workshops that they have on there. So let's talk about our spiritual uh, health, this pillar of the, this section of the pillar, right? So. Your spirituality can help a person tolerate stress by generating peace, purpose, and forgiveness. Calling out to the higher power uh, can help you with staying grounded and having faith with things that are beyond your control. So some of the action steps that you may want to take here is finding like an online spiritual website if you're not attending like a physical church and uh, or a meditation site or, you know, depending on where your, your higher belief is, you know, you may want to like tap into that 
and become as you may become more grounded. And so the social portion of the pillar is anything outside of you, right? So I'm considered the social part as your family, your spouse, your kids, everything that's outside of what you have going on internally. So brighten up your community, right? So bring joy to your family, your friends, your neighbors, and show your appreciation for others. Be kind to the people in your household and express your normal affection of love, right? We're spending a lot more time together. So you may not have even noticed uh, something about your significant other or your, ch your children that you've learned over the last few months. So just tap into that and appreciate it. You know, there's many creative ways to stay connected while practicing social distance. And another thing about that is that for me, I don't really even like to say social distance because we don't want you to not be social. We want you to be physically, physical distance, right? So physical distance, but not social distance. And uh, my family and I are conducting a Zoom cooking uh, lessons, which is, has been so amazing. We do it once a month. And you can reach out to me if you want to find out more how we coordinate it. But the aunts right now are teaching the nieces some traditional dishes. And it's been a lot of fun. And it's like family gathering where we're preparing a meal. So you can be creative, such as having something such as that, or doing a virtual workout session with friends. I posted um, dance routines, like you said, I've been teaching dance for a few years now, but it's been like at a location, but now that everything's remote, it's been a little different adjusting to that, but that's definitely a way of being active with, you know, your peers, your family, your loved ones, and so people are connecting all types of ways, like us, we're on Zoom, really appreciate this, or, you know, WhatsApp, or even like an IG Live, right, so Continue staying connected with your family, uh, but still practice distance and as you're out and about in the next few months and still wear your mask. So this one here is our final pillar and it's extremely important. And I know in our community, we do not talk about it enough. So this is the financial component of our health portfolio. And so right now, especially in COVID, we are experiencing the financial side twofold. All right, so in one aspect, the secure fold, fold of the financial health portfolios that some people are, you know, came up, right? They have grants for their business, they receive additional loans for their business, or, you know, the stimulus packet, or just people are just like navigating the world differently and, and, and experience that they financially gain, right? And for financial security on that end, it's the safety net and which is a peace of mind, and it can have a positive effect on one's well-being, right? But being able to work and pay bills regularly can like ease pressure. And no, this does not mean that, you know, if you're financially off or you're able to pay your bills or you're working, that you're not experiencing any um, like symptoms of depression or sadness. It definitely doesn't mean that. Just stating that there's a sense of security that you have. And I definitely want to, give my condolence for anyone that had lost someone. Um, I know I've, you know, lost people or people that has been sick. So definitely as a community, we want to like give, um, just show honor and respect to that and, and say our, our condolences. And as we all move in forward and being stronger as a unit dealing with this tremendous virus. And so on the flip side of the finance, uh, you have the, being unsecure, right? So we do know in our community, we have experienced a lot of loss and that's financial loss, right? Unemployment rate has gone uh, skyrocket and it's been hitting our community on a larger scale, right? So not having a, safe, a steady flow of income, whether you receive a W-2 or 1099 can cause anxiety. And people who are struggling with managing their finances may be more prone to experience stress and feel more mentally drained. Right, so know that you're not alone in this and that um, managing your finances is something that we all have to manage through, right? So it's like, how do we try to handle that? Will you try to um, make more money or get another job or just figure out a different strategy? But those are different ways that people are feeling unsecure in this uh, stage that we're in. And so we need to know as a community, we're last hired, first fired. It's a phenomenon that affects Black Americans more than any other group in the United States due to the country's history of racism and segregation of Black Americans in the work sector. So Black families are experiencing and uh, being very vulnerable to economic downturn 
due to the lack of savings that can act as a buffer against unexpected layoffs. So according to The Guardian, the median net worth of Black families is 17,600 compared to 171,000 for white families. And so a white family is more likely to have 10 for every $1 a Black family has. And so what this means is that today is a new day, right? So we have some action plans and some action steps that we want us all to take. We are very educated people on this live. And um, I appreciate you all being here. So I want to encourage you to, you know, think of that entrepreneurship, right? Like, if you want to start a business, start that business, right? Figure out if you want it to be an LLC, partnership, S Corp. But think about that, right? Because that's something that you can pass down. That's something that can't be taken away from you. You cannot pass on a job, right? But you can pass on your business, right? So figure that out. Having building wealth within our community and also home ownership. Right now, the interest rate is... The, like the lowest that it's been in years, right? So a lot of people are thinking about maybe it's time for me to buy a house. Yeah, I think it is maybe about that time. And so think about how you can either start saving for your down payment or figure out different programs for first time home buyer programs. There's plenty of them out there. And, um, you know, strategize that you want to continue to maybe, you know, paying a mortgage versus paying someone else's, paying rent that's someone else's mortgage. So building up wealth that way. And then uh, another action step is investments, right? So anyone that purchased, they had some stocks back in March when it was like on sale, a lot of them have come up now in September, right? So having different investments in place and don't worry that when the market goes down, you need long-term investment and you're able to, you know, not just not close your eyes, right? But like have good stocks that are valuable and credible and long-term values, long-term investments, you realize you're going to have a gain versus just pulling out, right? So you think about if you purchased something last year and you're like, man, my stock is down, but just think about it when things are on sale, right? So if you purchase something at a bag for a uh, full price, and then three months later, it's on sale, you're happy, right? So think of the stock as it on sale, as it's going down, because I know the last few weeks, it's been in the red. So, you know, just continue to think about your investment strategy, maybe purchasing some stocks and think of products and brands that you shop at. Like if you wear Nikes, I know I wear Nikes, may want to invest in some Nike stocks, right? So just think about where the market is going and technology that's a high driven uh, sector that you may want to look into. And also um, just, you know, tech those things. So these are different things that I, you know, help people try to strategize or figure out. Um, as we're planning our uh, strategy for our lives, right? So next I would like to discuss outside of all six of those pillars that we touched on, we want to talk about the racial impact, right? And how it has truly impact our world, impact our space and impact our mental health, right? So systemic racism is a conversation that we all need to have about our mental health. And these graphics below, it states that racism is a mental health issue because it causes trauma, right? And trauma paints a direct line to mental illness, which needs to be taken seriously, right? So the major reasons for higher COVID-19 hospitalization and deaths within Black community is one, we're more likely to live in condensed areas. Black people around this nation are living in cities, right, that are highly dense and buildings and uh, residential areas where it's not much space, it's not the suburbs that majority of Black people live. And so also, we're most likely to have health conditions that put us at risk. And also, when you talk about these health conditions, that's all a part of health disparities, right? And how racism plays into that, right? It's, it's not just a thing that this person, Black people have diabetes, like why, right? So there's so many different factors of why we have these mental health conditions and we're at risk because of our health. And so less likely also, you know, we have not enough lack of health care. Right, the resources for that. And then lastly, we are more than likely to work in industries that we have like high contact with people. So we work in public service, uh, whether that is working for transportation or sanitation or food services, we're out in the public more. And so the impact of mental health on us is that we may feel a sense of worry, panic, uh, feeling powerless. I know 
some people that was even watching the elections yesterday had a sense of worry and concern and like, what is next for us? What is next for, you know, people of color, for black people? And, you know, do they understand like our real um, concerns and our, our real problems that we need to tackle and the trauma that we are experiencing with that? So that's unfortunate. But, you know, the action plan around that is that make sure you do your census. <laughs> the deadline was today, but it got extended to October 31st. But within this month, if you haven't done it, please do it and also encourage your family and friends to do it because that is how they're tracking how to give more funding, more money to your community, right? And also vote, right? I know we pretty much think that we're all going to vote, but maybe people like the, the states that need to be focusing on, if you have friends and family in Florida and North Carolina, these states that are like red, but you know, we need to like tell people to vote. So here's some resources to help us with uh, tackling a lot of the different pillars that I talked about or different stress. You can like go to my website, mycarenwish.com and become a member, you know, go to the contact us and put in your information. And this is my email address. Also follow me. So like right now, just go to your Instagram, follow me at my underscore caring underscore wish. And then know that New York NYC Well is a program that provides support for anyone uh, in New York or you know out of state, and you they can connect you to like online support. So you can text them, you can you know call, and they're 24 hours. And then if you need immediate assistance, uh, if you're experiencing like suicide thoughts, please do not be ashamed. Uh, call this hotline, or if you're experiencing domestic violence, you know here's a number for you as well. And then 311 is always like a resource for. Um, different uh, programs. So I want to thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you took some good notes and follow through. Like I said, follow me on Instagram and, you know, send me an email. I would like to know how you're all doing. And for the first 10 people that follow me on Instagram, you're going to receive a special message. So look forward to hearing from you and I'll talk to you in a bit. So if you have like questions, I want you to uh, ask questions in the comment uh, section and we're going to have a quick Q&A. Thanks. Dina, oh, oh my God. I don't know about you all, but uh, I've been uh, taking some notes. I've, I've had, I didn't want to stop your presentation and, 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 and you know, ask you questions, but I have a, a bunch of questions. I, I will uh, sort of look in the chat to find, see, see whoever has questions we, we, we could answer at this time, a quick Q&A. But let me, let me take first dips, right? Um, so in your opinion, you know, we went through the pillars. What are five questions pe folks need to be asking themselves daily? as it relates to mental health? Well, what, like five questions that people can ask? Five simple questions that they ask themselves. Okay. Well. So we can do five or we can do six, right? So we can look at each pillar and, okay. um, you know, from the, the physical, right? Like, you know, right now, look, I'm having a smoothie. Mm -hmm. And so, I love my smoothie, right? So I, I have smoothies, I try to have them. I would love to have them every morning or every day. But, uh, you know, it's just a different way of not having like sugar as much. Um, and so I, you know, natural sugars, right? So it's like when the, one of the questions you could say, okay, the choices, my food choices, am I making the right choice for me? Am I loving me by the food choices that I'm making, right? And so that's what the physical. For the mental, you can ask how, how are you feeling? Like, you know how you're feeling. Like the other day I was distracted. Like I had so much work to do. I was working on an assignment that was like cram time. And I realized I was distracted and I had to analyze what was going on. And I realized the first thing was I got an email from a senior, you know, someone executive that asked for something in, in like real time. And that just threw me off. I didn't go out for a walk. I usually like to walk or bike ride. I didn't get a chance to do that. I had a late lunch. So I just had to like mentally like analyze what's going on today and why am I off? So I think you need to like be in tune with yourself and like process your feelings, like I stated. Um, social, you know, connecting with people, all right? So when you're having those off days, make time for the, your loved ones that can make you grounded. Uh, financial, 
uh, ask, you know, when you're making these purchases, are you purchasing as a consumer or are you purchasing as an investor, right? So uh, respect the brands that respect you in a sense, right? So like, if you a Procter & Gamble girl, like use their products, their consumer goods, then you may want to buy stock in that. So like, how are you like becoming more of an investor and investor mindset? Um, I started an investment group, right? So it's like, thinking of different ways to just use your dollar stronger and make it work for you. So I think those are like different things that, you know, a person could do for themselves. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, another question I have, I have, you know, I definitely don't want to overlook um, the, so, this, the racial inequity um, that are uh, that our current country is facing into, well, that the, our, the current state has highlighted. Um, and in your opinion, um, you mentioned the, the many different things that uh, folks could do to sort of uh, increase their, um, their mental health as it relates to um, racial inequity issues. Um, but what, is it, what do you think is the strongest what I think is the strongest what people could do for what? What's the question? What do you think is the, the strongest? Um, I guess what I guess what I'm saying is what what do you think is the, the most impactful step someone could take in order to increase their mental health in this as it relates to the stress of, of in, inequity issues? Uh, across, right. Across so what I encourage America. people to not feel like they're powerless. Mm -hmm right? Voicing your opinion and, and, and being heard, right? So we are so concerned about the presidential election, but it's a lot more than that, right? Like, what are you doing in your community, right? The, the community board, your mayor, the different uh, electorals in your community. Are you going to uh, the community association meetings? Like, are you attending your, your child's uh, open, like, school association you know, on the, the parent, the PTA meetings, like just being more active in your community and having a voice. Like we, our voice is very powerful. Let's think about these other communities that have a strong voice and a lot of stuff do not go down in their communities. Why? Because people are afraid. People are afraid to just um, go in their community and show disrespect because they know they're going to hear from their their leader, their religion practices. So how can we be very powerful in our own community and write, write. Just like we like to text our friends about things that's going on when we don't like something, we need to do the same thing, but then send it to the right places. So that's, that's my take on how we can take back our control and knowing where we spend in our dollars. I think a lot of it comes to economics and comes to political. And a lot of people like don't like to talk politics, don't like to talk religion, but you know what? We live in a society where politics runs a lot of things that's going on. Look at our, our government, look at like who's voted as judges and how the judge, you know, place our people in incarcerated, you know, in, in prisons and, you know, who's, who's there to voice, to be our voice, right? So like just being active, just being socially conscious, just being socially active, being involved in, in your space. So, you know, great, great, uh, great point, uh, Dina. Uh, and I, I'm looking at the chat, uh, you know, folks did mention uh, in terms of the financial stress, right? Um, you know, purchasing homes um, through the NACA program. Um, I, you know, I looked into it, great, amazing program um, for first time home buyers. Um, you know, they actually provide you down, the, the down payment for your home. Um, you know, of course, you got to meet certain criteria. So anybody that's looking uh, for a opportunity for home ownership should definitely look at NACA. Yeah. Uh, you know, great comments. So, you know, to wrap it up. Speak on NACA, I can definitely talk more um, into the NACA program. Very familiar with it. And from my knowledge in New York, they don't provide uh, financial assistance, but you can buy down your points. So what that means is that if you had $20,000 that a lot of people want to put down for a down payment, mm -hmm. uh, say a house is a house in uh, Brooklyn, $500,000, right? And for the most part, if you had to put, 
you know, $20,000 down, okay, now it's four eighty dollars that you have to pay. But you still have your interest rate of, say, 2.75%, right? But if you take that $20,000 and you buy down your points, now your interest rate is, say, these are all, like, rough numbers. Don't quote me on that. But say your interest rate is now 2.25. Now that over the 30 year, over 30 years, paying 2.25 interest rate versus 2.75 interest rate is a huge difference. It's thousands of dollars that you're saving. So that $20,000 that you initially put down where you're paying 480 versus the 500 is a lot less. So that's the value, one of the values that NACA have. And also, you know, there's no uh, attorney's fee that you have to pay. And there's like a lot of other things. You can definitely uh, DM me to find out more about like the NACA program because I'm a strong advocate of using that service. But do know if you do use that service, it takes time, right? So don't get frustrated. Just realize you have a plan. So don't like think you're gonna buy a house, this first time home buyer program and have your house by the end of this year. Nope, because they're gonna make sure your finances is in place, your credit is in line. You know, they want your first born child blood type. I mean, it's serious. But once you go through that process, you are so much better off. So. That's what I'll say about that home buyer program. Absolutely. And to wrap it up, um, you know, in terms of actionable steps folks to take right now, you mentioned uh, register for a spiritual group. So are you referring to going to Facebook and finding certain groups to join or is there a certain website that folks could go to? No. Well, my recommendation on that, because I don't know what people's beliefs are, uh, but when I mention like the spiritual group, like church, different churches that I, I'm familiar with is i uh, you know, like friends of friends, they would send me like the link to their church that they attend. So I don't want to name any church, <laughs> but uh, there, there's been like, I'm sure like, you know, if you attend a church, your, your pastor may be online or uh, a friend may tell you their service, uh, which I know like on Sundays, I've attended some service at 11 o'clock or some at 11 30, 12 o'clock, but there is a variety. But yeah, you may can even also check uh, Facebook for it because that's where I log into. So so there you have it folks. Um Dina, thank you. Uh in our health portfolio we talked about various different components. Um each should be given the same attention equally across the board. Um even though we're in a situation where um you know it's a, a pandemic going on and we can't you know meet together, you know, we still have virtual uh, virtual opportunities to ensure our mental health. Um, so at this point, we're going to move forward with our, our next piece of the uh, discussion. Uh, we're going to move over to uh, Miss Courtney Eleni, founder of a, a Queen's Baby Yoga. Okay, so Courtney, are you ready? Hello. Hey, can you hear me, George? Yes, I, I could hear you. I could hear you. Okay. So uh, just a little bit of uh, background about Courtney. Courtney is uh, the founder of, and head instructor for A Queen Babe Yoga, as I mentioned. She has been participating, uh, practicing yoga for several years prior to becoming a certified group exercise instructor in 2018. Courtney has taught a variety, a variety of exercise classes, but her main focus is Shakar Yoga and TRX. Okay, so instructing Shaka Yoga increasing, increased Courtney's passion for fitness while leading her to discover the spectrum of spiritual and its relationship to health and wellness. Uh, in 2020, Courtney continued to expand on physical, mental, and spiritual awareness under a Queen's Yoga Babe. Uh, a Queen's Yoga Babe uses the yoga practices as fitness components that aids in strengthening, healing, the body to produce a well-balanced beginning. So at this point, uh, we are going to go to Courtney. The floor is yours. Great. Thank you so much, George, for the introduction. Um, so thank you so much to Dina as well for the six pillars and going over physical, mental, diet, of finance, spiritual, and social. So with the Queen's Babe Yoga, we also, we look to expand our health portfolio and we bring awareness to our pillars as well. So we do that with the practice of yoga and we use it as the fitness component. And that's, we do that to strengthen and heal our body 
with the practice to become a well-balanced being. So because we're uh, this is we only have about 30 minutes, I won't be going through a yoga class, but what I will be instructing is kind of just showing a quick beginner seated and standing um, flow. So what are the yoga benefits when it comes to our health of polio? What I look at personally is I look at the strength, the balance, the endurance, and the flexibility. So with our flow, we'll be going through, I'll be showing how each one works with that, with our body, and how it all comes together. So just quickly going over the four, strength, balance, endurance, and flexibility. So strength, you know, we want us to be physically strong, and we want to um, withstand great force and, you know, pressure. With balance, life can knock us down, and we just have to know how to bounce back and, you know, just have a quick reaction time, mastering transition, and developing our power. With endurance, we want to, it's with stamina. So we want to remain active, and our ability to withstand and recover from trauma and fatigue. And with flexibility, yes, we want to be strong and balanced and endurance, but sometimes it's also knowing when we need to bend and when we need to understand that we need to change or compromise. So to me, that all comes together and with yoga. And with the Queen's Big Yoga, we combine all that with our pillars to create our health portfolio and just become a well-balanced being. So just to start into our seated flow, like I said, I won't be going through it with you guys. So usually if it was a class, it would be that, you know, if we have to take five breaths, we will take five breaths together. But since we don't have that time, we, I'll just be going into it. So first, we could come into easy pose. Easy pose, our legs are crossed, both hands will be on both knees. Our eyes would be closed. And we'll be focusing on our breath. During this time period, it's usually when we come into meditation. So meditation, it could be, there's multiple types of meditation. And it usually helps us come, become centered and focus on our body, our mind. We usually would be in easy pose, focusing on breathing, deep breaths for a few minutes. From here, we'll start our seated flow. So we're going to come into bound angle. From bound angle, we're going to have soles of our feet come together. We're going to have both hands. We're going to touch the tops of our feet. This is going to help with our endurance and our flexibility. We want to have bring the heels as close to the body as we can. We want to bring the knees down to the ground. Our back is straight, spine is straight. From here, we're going to come to staff. With staff, take a deep inhale, raise the arms, stretch forward. You hold your staff for five breaths or 30 seconds. Once that's complete, you're going to release the staff. Coming back up, we're going to bring both hands to the sides of our body. We're going to push our hips up. We're, string, we're tightening our arms, blocking in our elbows. Our gaze are going to come forward. We're coming into upward plank. Upward plank is great for increasing our strength. Hold this pose for five breaths, 30 seconds. From here, we will release, coming back down into staff. From staff, we're going to take both our feet. We're going to bring them down to the ground. Knees are bent. We're going to lower our backs slightly, and we're going to raise our legs up. We're coming into half boat. Half boat is great for our balance and our endurance. Once you find 
your balance. You extend both arms out and you hold for 30 seconds to a minute. And you breathe. Once your 30 seconds to a minute is complete, you bring the feet back down towards the mat. Come back into staff pose. And from here, you'll go into seated wide angle. So with seated wide angle, you'll raise both arms up and you'll bend forward. You'll hold this pose for 20 to 30 seconds. Seated wide angle is great for your flexibility and your endurance. You want to bring your chest as close to the ground as you can, reaching forward. You can move and reach for your right foot and go to the opposite side, reach for your left foot. With your right foot and left foot, you will want to hold the pose for the 20 to 30 seconds. Once that is complete, you will come back up and you'll bring both feet back together, coming back into bound angle. From bound angle, we can start again with our beginner seated flow. So this flow is great. It's very quick. It helps bring up, um, raise the heat, but it's also very easy to add additions to this flow. So for example, we were in upward plank. It's very easy to go from upward plank into tabletop. And it's very easy to add more. For example, we were in half boat pose. We could go into full boat pose. And it's just, it's very beginner for, I'm not sure of the level of whoever's watching, but from beginner, you, that's when you transition into intermediate and advanced. So you can't go straight into advanced and expert if you don't know the beginner. So from here, a really great transition when you're going from seated to standing is downward facing dog. Downward facing dog is one of the best poses in yoga. Almost every in class instructor does a downward facing dog. So you go into tabletop. From tabletop, you go to the tops of the feet. You push the legs up, bring the hips up, straightening the arms, straightening the back, releasing the neck. The neck should be straight along with the back. From here, if you must, you can bend the knees. And usually, we can pedal the feet. Pedaling the feet is bringing the heels of the foot down towards the mat, then switching the feet, moving from right to left. As I mentioned, this is a great pose. It handles strength, endurance, flexibility, and your balance. So usually, one will hold, um, pedal the feet for a few breaths, downward facing dog usually lasts about a minute. From here, one will step or jump both feet in between the hands, coming into a standing forward bend. So from here, you slowly raise up, piece by piece. So we're coming to our standing pose, mountain. So from, and now we'll begin our standing flow. Our standing flow is all around going to be for balance. So what we will do, we're in mountain. We're gonna take a deep inhale. On your inhale, you're going to raise both arms up towards the ceiling. On your exhale, you're going to sit down, coming into chair pose. Hold your chair pose for 30 seconds. After your 30 seconds, you're going to raise back up, coming into tree pose. Well, after coming back into mountain, transitioning into tree pose. To come into tree pose, you could start right or left leg. So I'll be starting on my right leg. You take your foot and you bring it to the side of your ankle. You could also bring it up to the side 
your thigh. You do not want it to be on your knee as this would damage your knee. You want it to be on the fleshy part <laughs> of your leg. So you're gonna bring it up towards your thigh. Once you find your balance, take an inhale and you can raise both arms up towards the ceiling or you can come and bring it to the center of your chest. Hold tree pose for at five breaths. Once that's complete, release. Inhale, raising both arms up. On your exhale, you're going to sit back down into chair pose. You can hold your chair pose for 30 seconds. After the 30 seconds, you release, raising back up. And then you continue tree pose on the opposite side. So this side, it will be the left ankle or thigh. Find your balance. Bring your inhale, raise the arms. Or you could bring it into prayer. And hold your pose. As I mentioned, since there's not much, this is much time, can't hold it with you guys. So we're going to release. And that is our standing flow. So from here, we have our seated and our standing. Standing is staying but seated, it's great all around balance, but it's also very easy to add to this flow. So with the flow, as we did, we did chair pose, but it's very easy to advance your chair pose so you can make it into a chair pose twist. Bring both hands to your chest and twisting. So you're bringing the opposite arm to the opposite leg. You're opening your chest, bringing your gaze to the opposite side. So in this case, I'll be taking my left arm, bring to the outside of my right leg, and I'm opening my chest to the right hand side. Same with chair, you will hold it for 30 seconds. This is a revolved chair twist. You release, continue on the opposite side. And just like I mentioned with the standing flow, just so the flow would be mountain, chair, tree, mountain, chair, tree. So you could, like I said, you can chair, twist, tree, mountain, chair, twist, tree, or you could add mountain, chair, tree, and you could add an eagle or anything that you may like. But it all comes whatever is comfortable and natural to you. So from here, we're going to transition back down to the mat. While we can go back into a downward facing dog, what we can do is we could go into half flat back. So from mountain, take an inhale, raising both arms up on our exhale, and then back down. Coming to a standing forward bend. But from here, we'll take both hands and we'll bring it to our shins, coming into a half flat back. We want to make sure our back is flat as we can. Once hold this pose for a few breaths, and then you release. On our standing forward bend, this is when you want to release all the tension. Tension in the neck, the upper back. You want to breathe and sway. So you just let go. You can hold since standing for a bend is very restorative. You can hold it for as long as you would like. But from here, what we're going to do is we're going to plant both hands down on the mat. We're going to step both feet back and come to the top of our toes. We're lowering our hips, tightening our core, straighten our back, our gaze is forward, pushing our heels back, and coming to a plank. Plank is great for our strength and endurance. It works all parts of our body, so our core. Hold your plank. I usually hold planks for 30 to 45 seconds, but it all depends on if you can roll it. So from here, you'll lower yourself down. 
to the ground. And you'll roll over. Uh, so you'll roll over. And from here, what you would do is you will bring both legs up towards the um, in the air. You will have the legs at a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle. From here, you can, one of the restorative poles that I, there's many, but one that we can go through is eye of the needle. So with eye of the needle, what we do is we will take our one foot. So we'll start with our right foot and, or yeah, we start with our right foot. We'll bring it to the top of our left thigh from here, take both hands, take our right hand, you bring it in through the circle we made with both legs. You take our left hand, you bring it to the opposite side, we interlock our fingers, and we pull our left leg in towards our body, coming into the eye of the needle. Making sure that our back is to the ground, and we breathe. From here, you would release after a few breaths, continue on the opposite side. And after a few breaths of that, we release. Another restorative pose that is very common is knees to chest or happy baby. Happy baby is when you grab the tops of the toes. And from here, after your happy baby and your knees to chest, you would release the legs, release the arms, coming into savasana. Savasana is uh, how most yoga classes would include. And it's back to the start when we will discuss meditation or breathing. So, the Savasana, one meditation or one, I guess I would say is a body scan. So a body scan would be we target multiple parts of the body. So we start at the toes, go up the feet, the, um, up the legs, fingers, arms, our torso, and we would just, you would just kind of just notice how does your body feel? How does, how does the body feel? How does each part feel? So what you would do is kind of just close your eyes. You can imagine a light or you can imagine <laughs> just anything at all and just really Feel what works with you and attention. And releasing attention. And you just scan your body. So we're almost done with our yoga flow. So we have a seated yoga flow, a standing yoga flow, a restorative yoga flow. We're going to go through a sample breathing technique that one can do. And then from there, we'll conclude a Kumi's Day Yoga. So an example of a Kumi's Day, an example of a breathing technique is we'll do Ocean's Breath. So with ocean breath, what we will do is you begin taking long, slow breaths through the nostrils and making sure the lips are closed. You allow the breath to slightly contract at the back of the throat. A steady hissing sound should be created as the, you breathe in and out. The sound should not be forced, but loud enough for someone to hear you nearby. 
Then from here, we will lengthen the in um, inhalations and the exhalations as much as possible, allowing for a continuous circular flow without creating tensions anywhere in the body. So this is the ocean sound. And you can practice, you can make the um or the home. Oh. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but it's breathing. We can't hear you. One more. Um. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, George, are you still here with us? Yes, I'm still here. Uh, so, we have about two minutes. Are you Great. Um. So this is a conclusion to a Queen's Big Yoga. We, like I mentioned, we went through our flow, our breathing, and just to conclude, usually our classes conclude with a mantra. So the mantra for today, or what I would like to think of our mantra, is kind of thinking about gratitude. So we know our health portfolio, but sometimes people take health for granted. And it's just, we never really think about it, but there's so much you can be grateful for. So one mantra that um, I like to conclude with is, when eating fruit, remember their, remember the one who planted the tree. Just a little proverb for us to think about. And from here, I like to turn it over to Dana and George. Thank you so much for watching and listening to you guys. And I look forward to hearing from you guys and continuing with our health portfolio discussion. So on to George and Dina. Courtney, thank you so much. Uh, that was amazing. That was truly amazing. We appreciate you for uh, showing us these techniques. And I want to remind folks, these techniques are, you know, when brought together, they help us with our phys physical and mental uh, discipline so that we could achieve a peaceful body and mind. It helps us manage stress and anxiety and keeps us relaxed, all right? That's, that's the main goal here. We're trying to, uh, you know, show you, you all some techniques that you could implement on a daily basis to keep your stress level down. So thank you again, Courtney. So at this time, uh, I'm going to let uh, Ms. Dina take it away. <laughs> hey, again. All right, so now we're going to go into a quick uh, gratitude session. And so, you know, thank you, Courtney, for opening the mantra and setting us in that space. And we have a lot of things to be grateful for, you know, whether, you know, today your child made you some eggs or you learned the latest TikTok dance, because I know I've been trying during this COVID, learning these new dance moves, but it's just different things that we want to appreciate and show uh, value to our self-being and I just want us all to think about something that may have happened to us this week that we feel um, something that we're, we're like thankful for right so today's like mantra meditation we want to go beyond the attitude towards gratitude but also taking steps towards it we're making grace a permanent established habit Right, so gratitude is simply how you feel and how you express who you are and how it cultivates into your life. So making grace a way of life. And so I think a gratitude for me is actually being, uh, being able to present to you all, right? So I wanna show my gratitude for the National Black uh, MBA Association for inviting me to be a part of this discussion because I know how impactful it could be to our community when we are talking about these pillars that really impact us all and how we can bring awareness and consciousness 
to it. So in the light of that, I want to know that I, you know, I want to continue this. So if you're at an organization or you're part of a group that would like for me to talk at another discussion with my Karen, which could bring some pillars or even some other uh, topics that you feel like needed, just, you know, reach out to me and I will uh, try to make space for uh, that opportunity. And so now I want us all that the remaining people that are on here to, to actually write like in the group chat, some things that you want to express gratitude for. And you could think of something, like I said, that happened maybe over the last week or even the last month. And it could be something personal, something business oriented, or, you know, just a, something, you know, because I think a lot of days we just kind of just go through the motions. But I want us to acknowledge and spend time in that space where we are showing appreciation. Yeah, so feel free to jump in the chat. Um, let us know what you're grateful for. Um, I'll, I'll start it off. Uh, I, you know, this might sound crazy, but uh, I'm actually grateful for sleep. Uh, prior to COVID, I, I didn't, re I realized, um, COVID made me realize that how much sleep I was not getting. Um, and, you know, that affected my mental health. A little. So, um, you know, COVID allowed me to sort of you know, not only get closer with my family, but rest a little bit, right? Um, and, and be active and, and, and sort of explore different things. But um, the importance of sleep is to get connected to the serious folks. We must get our sleep, right? Yeah, that's me. I need to go to bed. That's what I said. Go to bed. So uh, looking in the chat, uh, so, you know, Vita Morris, of course, uh, you know, board member, um, she ha is grateful for her health. Uh, we know how important uh, health is for Vina um, as, as she's been dealing with um, some, some, uh, some big challenges that she has overcome. All right, who else? Uh, okay, Andrew, the opportunity to, so Andrew, our president, he is grateful for the opportunity to support our co community all right, and you, we know how important our community is. Uh, and I want to remind folks that we are not alone. All right, so it, we are a community. We all here for each other. And so if you ever need any, anything, please feel free to email uh, any, any one of the board members, uh, email us directly um, or email president, uh, president, president at nyblackmba.com as relates to um, different uh, pressures, career pressure, financial pressure, um, we have a tremendous resource of folks that uh, could help you out. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we are, who else is grateful? Um, Jennifer G, my home, my job, my family and friends, extremely, extremely grateful for peace of mind and the strength and motivation I had this month to show up for myself. Uh, that is an, an important statement. Um, at the end of the day, we are our biggest assets, right? So our mental health uh, has to be uh, ha has to be a top priority. Okay, uh, let's move on. Who else is grateful? Let's see. All right. Thank you, everyone. You know, continue to write your comments on what you're uh, grateful for. But those are some like amazing uh, sh um, statements to show appreciation. Okay. Okay, and, and, and it seems that um, many people are grateful for this session as well. Okay, so, so any last thoughts in terms of uh, being grateful? Anyone else, anyone else wants to share? I'm grateful for being safe and healthy with my family. Absolutely, family is uh, extremely important, especially um, in these times and so, having a healthy family, um, of course, uh, contributes uh, to a great mental health status. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, Chad. Guys, <laughs> during COVID and, uh, and, and, and NBA basketball hmm. bubble. Okay, yeah, so we all, uh, us men are grateful for the fact that at least we have some sports um, that we could look I'll at. I'll just say us men. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So everyone is grateful for uh, us to have um, some sports that we could look at. Um, I'm seeing Lakers because LeBron, he's super conscious. He'd be saying what's right and talk about 
systemic racism. So I'm definitely down with LeBron. Definitely, it's gonna be in the record books. I mean, um, I, I love how he's uh, handling the situation um, that we're in, in terms of uh, racial inequity being highlighted. Um, and uh, just, you know, uh, it's an amazing individual, an amazing human being. All right. Uh, that's, that's men who switch. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> All right, it's not just men. Um, what else? Um, yeah, so I think that is it. You know, I think uh, we, we got our gratitude session complete. Oh, we got another one from Miss T. Okay, your guests were amazing. I am forever grateful for my family and health and being able to par participate in the information sessions. Yes, uh, we are very, very uh, appreciative of our members um, and even non-members that get an opportunity to join us in the, these discussions. Uh, you know, we have to, we challenge ourselves to try to come up with uh, uh, discussions that are really engaging and really impact, impacting people, folks' uh, lives. And so um, from financial literacy to uh, uh, transit, uh, transforming generational wealth, um, you know, mental health is something that uh, we uh, always want to make sure that uh, it's in our uh, top, uh, top uh, discussions uh, on a uh, consistent basis. Okay, a lot of friends and family, of course, um, Juanito, another board member of ours, um, an amazing individual. He's grateful for his friends and family. So, Ms. Neal, I think yes. we are done. Uh, we have about uh, seven minutes. Um, at this time, I'm going to pass it on, along to you um, for uh, closing remarks. Yeah, so thank you everyone for joining. I know people said that um, to include like my contact information. I don't know if everyone got it, but I you know, I hope we all learned something today and was able to take some notes on the pillars. And definitely you can, like I said, follow me on IG um, for uh, my underscore caring uh, underscore wish. In addition to D Felipe at mycaringwish.com. And I look forward to, you know, getting in touch with you. Someone did mention, some, someone did email me stating that they want some more information on um, meal plans and also how to talk more about uh, real estate and investment. So that's very powerful. And just know that we all have power, right? Don't let someone take away your power, that you have power to control your outlook. There's some things, of course, that are out of your control. And as I stated, stress is something that we all have to handle, but it's our outcome on how we manage it. And we know we have some powerful tools, go to bed, <laughs> Think about it, meditate on it, connect with your friends, uh, and figure out strategies for your life. So I want to thank you all, and I look forward to the next session and, um, you know, again, to talk to you. So thank you. Okay. Excellent, excellent. So, Courtney, uh, any last thoughts? Uh, thank you so much, from George, for hosting this event. Thank you so much for the um, NY Black MBA for um, hosting this event as well. Thank you so much for Dana for co-hosting with me. And I lo love the health portfolio. I'm so honored to be a part of this and I'm so honored for everyone to be here and view with us and be able to participate with this discussion. And I look forward to all of us improving our health and just, you know, growing with the future and improving our communities. So, thanks. Okay. Uh, so, folks, uh, I know everybody has to get back to their lives and a better mental health status. Uh, we are going to end it, uh, but, but first I'd like to leave you with um, uh, a, a last word from our president, if uh, Andrew's still online. Andrew, can you jump on and just uh, address, the, uh, address the, the folks? <laughs> I wasn't planning to, but you know, <laughs> that's all right. Um, again, <laughs> I know, once again, thank you, George, for your leadership in uh, doing this. Uh, Dean, I can't say enough. Thank you so much. I met you over two years ago at, um, at a, um, a mental health event at Google, and I'm glad that um, I stayed after you to participate in our organization, and here you are. And thank you very much for bringing your energy and spirit to this. Courtney, um, thank you. Uh, meeting you as well. Thank you for providing your leadership in the yoga 
classes as well as our community needs it. We really need to take care of each other. And, and it starts with looking, looking into the mirror every day that we must take care of ourselves. And we cannot pour from an empty cup. I keep hearing that statement over again. We cannot pour from an empty cup. So everyone here on this line, keep in mind that take care of yourself first. And we hope that these events that we provided for you give you some tips, insights to fill that cup a little bit more to the top. Um, for a bit tomorrow with Vina. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, he's a warrior. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't say that in the sense of loosely, but uh, I'm looking forward to her um, uh, having a discussion. It's very is a very uncomfortable discussion. I suffered, um, unfortunately, my family loss of cancer. Uh, and um, I think that we should talk about it bravely, authentically, but more importantly, um, us being black. And it doesn't, you know, um, it's so fitting that a black woman is leading this because of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the need in the community. So once again, I thank you uh, coming out this evening. Uh, I can't thank you again and um, look forward to more events from us. And this is the Leadership Channel Award Champion, the New York Metro Black NBA Chapter of 2020. And uh, we look forward to the next six months and 2021, is our year, the odd year, I call it. And there's one more year to be great. <laughs> so have a good night. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Andrew. I appreciate it, Press. All right, so let's continue to be innovators. Uh, let's continue to support each other. And let's continue to focus strongly on our mental health. Uh, make sure you follow NY Black NBA uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, Instagram. Thank you, folks, and have a great night.